Hi guys, it's Dakota. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the Hallowed Cauldron. So today I have decided to do another series. I'm sorry. Um, I know that a lot of people really liked, they really enjoyed the chakra series and that made me really excited and I'm still getting emails and pictures of some of the spell work that um, you all are doing and and it's really you know it just tickled me it's really great I love it um, and anyway and and so that you know they felt that it was very helpful and I know it was seven weeks but um, you know it takes a while to learn it and it takes a while to get your stuff together and and to actually understand the meaning behind what it is that you're doing so what I'm going to do today um, is something that I found in one of my old um, books, one of my old notebooks. When I say old, I'm talking probably 15 years, if not a little bit older. It was in a hardcover book. I found some old spells and some incantations and, <laughs> you know, little poetry like I don't write poetry you could tell by these books um, but a, just a lot of thoughts and a lot of things and for me to look at that now it was really um, I don't know it was it was really humbling to look at that and go and you know and I was I thought that I was really serious back then and but you can tell the growth. You can see how much I've grown spiritually and how much more, um, and I'm just going to use this word because I, I don't know, how much more adept I am at what it is that I am doing only because now I have some structure. I have a foundation um, that I follow to build the house where back then I didn't really have any structure. I didn't understand that. I didn't know that I didn't have a mentor back then. I wasn't part of a coven. I didn't have my own coven. And, um, you know, so I was just doing, you know, if, and back then Scott Cunningham was, um, was my mentor <laughs> and uh, his books. And, you know, if he said, this is a spell to do for this and that's what I wanted to do. Then I did the spell exactly as he said, and and that's a good way to get started. I'm just saying that that's a good way to get started. But once you start there, and then 15 so many years later, um, you see where you're at. It's quite different, quite different. And and back then, I wasn't um, I I wasn't committed. I wasn't dedicated. I was not um, initiated into my practice. I am this daily. I have a daily practice, a daily practice. And the only time that I literally break away from that devotional practice that I have is if I am really sick. I don't do it and that's because one I'm not into it and if I'm not into it I feel like um, it's a bit dis disrespectful uh, to the gods and um, so you know so that's why I don't do it but that's rare um, so I'm in it every day back then there wasn't that back then it was oh it's a full moon let's get the girls together and and oh let's dress in black and wear witch hats and you know uh have a have a moon ritual we and it was fun it, don't get me wrong it was fun it was a blast we had so much fun and uh but even today i still have fun in ritual we still do some very playful things and you know, that hasn't disappeared at all. That hasn't disappeared at all. But there is a, oh gosh, I don't even know how to word it. A more, 
a more structured, rooted way of doing things. I know you, you'll be as tired of me hearing or hearing me say that as my students get when I start talking about the root and the foundation of your house. If you don't have that, why are you doing it? You know, you can't. You don't build a roof and then build the foundation. Uh, you know, you build the foundation first and then you put the roof on. So, but you know, that's what I was doing. I mean, I was. If I had a book, I'm going to the last chapters and seeing what they're doing. I, I don't want to read about how to get there. I just want to do it. So there was no foundation and there was no, no rhyme or reason. It was just doing it when you felt like it. And in between time, you just did whatever you did. You know, if it was witchcraft, great. And if it was not, then you didn't do it. And you didn't, never thought about it. But now I have a devotional practice and that is every day. That is every day devotional practice. So I'm very different today than I was back then. But I don't get me wrong. I still love having a blast on, on rituals, you know, but not every witch. Some rituals are, are, um, very serious for me, very formal, um, and, uh, very focused. And, and I love those too. I love those too. So don't get me wrong. Okay. So anyway, when I was going through my book, then I, um, I found a hardcover journal, notebook, whatever you want to call it. And it had something that I had done 15, I think it was 15 plus, give or take, years ago. Um, and, and it just really, like, it touched me on a, on a memory scale, because I was like, wow, that's, that's wild, you know, that, um, I did that back then, and how would I do it today? You know, it would be very different today. And, um, so, <clears throat> Anyway, I decided to share that with you today, or in a series. And I'm sorry, it's going to be a, I think it's a seven part, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> losing my voice. Um, it's going to be a seven part series. It has to be in order for me to get enough information out to you so that the end result, you will understand and feel what it is that I'm trying to do with this and hopefully you'll join in with that um, so so the first thing that we're going to talk about today okay so first let me tell you so we're going to be talking about the elements but but we're not just going to be talking about the elements um, this isn't about element of air you know Leaves blowing, air your breath, angel wings, <laughs> um, yellow. It, it isn't that. You will be getting some of that information because some of that information is important in what we're going to be doing on that end result day. So, of course, I'm going to be going over some of that with you. But that isn't exclusive to what it is that we're going to be talking about. But there is going to be some talk about the elements, um, of course. Um, and I will go deeper into then that end result later on. But we're going to start with today and you'll, you'll, you might go, what is she talking about? What does this have to do with anything? Hopefully you'll discover that when we get to that end result, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna talk about today is binding. Um, binding spells, I guess, if you will. But we're gonna be talking about binding and I'm not gonna go into the the um, the deepness of, of binding, but I want you to be clear as to what this binding how this binding is going to influence our end results okay so and i'll tell you a little bit about binding as i go i do have my notes here so i am going to be looking down occasionally so that i don't miss anything because this is a this is important to what it is that we're going to be doing all right so binding um is actually like from the the Roman and the Greek days, it's a very ancient thing. They they would do binding back then, and 
typically the binding was used for more of a to protect the person like if I was the person that was casting the bind then perhaps you had maybe you you had an addiction problem and so I cast a bind to um my hair is all over the map to um there we go it was bugging me i'm sorry it was woo, sticking out okay so the bind that i cast to you the person that has an addiction to whatever um is to prevent you from harm from hurting yourself any further so that was typically what it was for. It was for protecting a person from causing themselves harm. The other thing that it was used for was protecting the caster and their spell work from magical intruders who may want to get into and and prevent that energy from being cast out so you would bind yourself or your spell work with protection and so that's typically what it was used for typically now i'm sure that a lot of you have heard about binding and you know uh bind your enemy and those different there's there's different aspects of binding that's why i said at the beginning of the video so don't send me any hate mail <laughs> that's why i said at the beginning of the, of the video is that i'm talking about binding in a sense that will help you understand our end result and you'll get we'll get there once i give you more information so, um, okay, let's see. So, the, so what is binding actually? Well, the magic behind or the, you know, the, the intention behind the binding is to keep the thing, the object, the person, the thing that you've bound it's to keep them tied until um, you actually release the bind by cutting the cord, which could be symbolic, cutting the energy cord, um, and then freeing that up. An example of a type of binding is a hand fasting or a marriage, a wedding ring that's a that's a binding um, if you've ever seen a hand fasting they're really really cool if you if you get somebody who's really good um, I I've I've seen a few and it's I don't know it's a, I don't know anyway so the hand fasting they literally bind your wrist with your uh, partners wrist you are bound together with a cord it's a binding they bind your wrist together that is a binding a wedding ring you know i mean okay so maybe you don't get a binding but the wedding ring that's what it does it binds you to that other person <clears throat> um one of the main things that you might have heard about binding is in voodoo or even some of the hutu, hutu, hutu practices. A lot of other practices use binding for um, their voodoo dolls. You know, they, they, this is the person, this is my ex and I want to bind them or this is the enemy. You know, this is, this is the person that I want to bind um, and make life miserable for them and so they would bind that person for um, uh, 
whatever purposes. Um, I we had a a class. It's been a couple years ago, probably longer. And we were talking about we were talking about poppets. Um, I don't know if you know what a poppet is. It's for lack of better words, it's like a voodoo doll, but it's a um, little hand stitch pop poppet. Oh, we made one. We made one for the um, heart chakra. That was a poppet. And we had it filled with the herbs and stuff like that. Well, you could take that poppet and put a name on it of the person that you want to bind. Maybe that person talks about you and you want to stop them, so you stitch across their mouth, you bind their speech so that they can't spread rumors about you anymore or ill talk about you anymore. Um, but even in Voodoo Hoodoo, they're, it's not, they're not just used for cursing, for hexing, for you know, putting those bad, wicked spells on, on your enemy or your exes and things like that. That typically is not what binding is used for. And I'm using the word typically and I'm using it a lot because it can be used for those things. Okay. Um, you can also use that you can bind yourself from negative talk. Bind yourself from negative talk. Um, I'm reading this real quick because I don't understand what it says. Okay, so let's talk. Here's the other thing. Binding, love spell bindings. All right, love spell bindings is... <laughs> Say there was, you had a breakup, and now you want to bind that person with you. You try, you're, you do a spell to bring that person to you, and you bind, maybe you wrap the two of you together in a spell. Um, another way of binding, like we have some um, candle figures at our store that we sell, and when you, both of them, so there's like two lovers facing each other and you light both candles when it melts down it binds the wax together so that's a forever thing you know what I mean like that's kind of a forever thing so if you have a relationship and you want that person back in your life and you name that person and you do a binding okay then good luck with that um, because now you have that person. Now you have that person. And earlier when I said, you know, you cut the cord <clears throat> with, that, with that person when you're ready to release the bind or whatever it is, there's more to it than just that. Like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. I really didn't want my ex back. It's not working out. I did a bind, but I'm just going to cut this cord and, and now it's fixed. It doesn't work quite that easy. There's a little bit more to it. Sorry, I'm sitting, as you can tell, I sit right under this vent up here, heater vent. This is drying out my throat. Um, one of the things that I love, okay, I love, I call it ice binding. Very easy to do. And one of the ways to do it is to, or some people call it a freezer spell. Maybe you've heard that, freezer spell. And whatever the um, <clears throat> whatever the intention is, you can write it on a piece of paper. If you you fold the intention away from you, and then put that in the water and freeze it, um, and then you can always take it back out and um, melt it when when the and, and when I'm using binding that way, like like a spell, like I want this spell to work, so I'm freezing the magic, and when the spell is complete, then I can let the magic go. Um, and I've done that even when, like, as part of my magic. So in other words, sorry, in other words, 
um, because I do like ice binding a lot or freezer binding. I'll write my intention of whatever it is that I'm either trying to manifest or release. Put it in the jar and or the plastic container, whatever. Put that in the freezer. Once it's frozen as part of my magic, then I take it out. Maybe I take it out on a full moon or a dark moon. Maybe I'm trying to add light to the situation and maybe I put it out in the sunshine and then I let it melt. The melting would be kind of like a candle magic where you light it, light the candle and as the flame burns, the intention goes out. It's the same thing with the with the ice melting. So now you've, you've done your intention, you've put your intention into your um, water that you're going to freeze. You can add a drop of food coloring. You can still add herbs to it. You can add uh, color to it, oils to it. The same thing that you do for anything. Um, candle magic. Even a little Grigri bag where if you put an intention in there, it's the same thing. That Grigri bag is full of herbs and roots and oils and who knows what else. You can do the same thing with your ice. Put it in there. While it's freezing, that gives you time to be considering your spell. And once it's frozen, now it is time to take it out and do your work. Maybe it's a full moon and you have to work today. So you really don't have time to do anything. But you want to do this frozen magic. So you or frozen spell. Frozen... <laughs> freezer binding I call it I call it ice binding <clears throat> so in the morning before you leave create your little sacred space you know do a little cleanse of yourself you've written your intention you've added your oils your herbs color if you want put it in your jar the jar in the freezer you go to work you come home you take your bath you get ready for your full moon ritual you take your ice out by the bonfire and it melts Whew. and the energy goes on out to the universe so I love that um, uh, you can also in, in your freezer spells you can like again if someone's um, talking about you you can um, add uh, maybe hot peppers or a little bit of vinegar to sour them a little bit um, you can add a little bit of um, wax in it drop a couple of things of, of wax in your ice it's gonna freeze right away it'll probably dry as soon as it hits the water but that seals the gossiping it's a really good thing um, and then if you want to, you can add a little bit of foil to your ice. Put your foil in there and that is reflective. You want to make sure that the reflective side, if you're releasing, that the shiny side of your foil is facing out. It's facing out because that's what you're doing. You're trying to send out those that releasing. And if you're trying to draw in... Um, although the ice spell is kind of, for me, it's really more about releasing. Um, however, it's all about your intention. You certainly can do an ice spell for manifestation, just like we do candles. We burn a candle for manifestation and it burns down to nothing. Same with the ice. As soon as that ice melts, the manifestation is complete. So just remember that. Um... Okay, so the binding does have something to do with the end result of this series that we're going to do. So those of you who have different ideas of binding, um, I think that's fantastic. I, I know the other side of binding. Let's just put it that way. I do know the other side of binding. I have witnessed it. I have never myself done a binding spell against somebody. Um, but, well, that's not true. 
sorry, I just lied. <laughs> I just thought of one that I did. Um, but it was, it was truly about this, the ceiling of, you know, sh like, shut up. <laughs> and, and it, and it was a ceiling. Um, stop, stop it. Uh, and, um, so there you go. Um, so it does have, the binding does have something to do with our end result that we're going to be doing with the elements. And, um, again, I do know both sides of the binding. I just want to make sure that you are clear. If you choose to do a binding spell on someone or against someone, you better think twice about it. Is it really what you want to do? Is it what's needed? If you're doing a love spell and you're binding that person to you, are you messing with their free will? Hmm, yeah. You might want to think about that. And are you, um, you know, months down the road, you're sick of that person. You just not still not what you thought. Now you're bound. It takes a lot to reverse that spell. It can be done, but it, but it takes a lot. So don't just think that the binding is all about the Ooh, the dark side of witchcraft. It is not. It definitely is not. It is definitely for protection and keeping yourself bound within, like a protection bubble. It's a type of binding. Just don't use string. <laughs> we use that visualization. Okay. So that's binding, and in a nutshell, how we are going to be using it towards the end result of our series that we're doing with the elements and we will be talking about that later on as we go all right so hope to see you guys next time and uh have a good week bye guys